everything that um, I'm supposed to talk about. So um, I'm going to start with this design. Let me share my screen then. I'm going to start with this um, this design I did. This one that I did some time ago, I think, somewhere in January. This design, this is what you are going to take a look at. You are going to just try to recreate the whole design. When you look at the design itself, it has a lot of things that you talk about with composition, typography, um, using the um, components of typography. That's the, um, the, um, the serifs, the font types, the spacing and everything. So we we'll just go through all of them. Then using this design would we'll learn a lot then whether I don't, I don't know what's challenge. I don't know everything. I know what I know. So whether that maybe you have to add something, then you add, then we just start with that. So without wasting time, let's let's go on and do something. So the design actually was made in a 10 by 10 inch um, workspace. That's a 10 inch by 10 inch Photoshop. It's a Photoshop program that I use for the work. And um, I use a resolution of 300. That's what I use for all my social media um, artworks. So most of it, my work, no matter where you post it, what I do, no matter where you post it, it will never pixelate because I give it um, high resolution. Since it's something that I'm going to, I'm going to post on social media, but not for print. But if it was to be for print, maybe I would have brought the resolution a little bit down to get it printed without taking a lot of colors. So I, it's a 10 by 10 inch, 300 resolution. And um, so there's a workspace. I think let me let me try and bring the work in so that we can I can look at it as it is. Then we'll work on it. Lodo. Okay. So, yep. Yeah, I think you have to share. Okay, you have to share the screen as well, like the workspace screen. Yeah, I've shared. I've shared it all. Yeah, I think what we are seeing right now is the okay. Yeah, um, oh. as the folder. Oh, sorry, 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 okay, sorry. Thank you. Sorry, bosses, sorry. Okay, so that is it. So I, I would I would import that work to this side, then we'll look at how it is, then we'll exactly do what it's there. Okay. So this is the work, and um, it has two colors. That is, a, um, I would say, a red, and a black, but it's not that a deep red, it's a, just a tint red that I used. If I'm using the wrong word too, you can correct me with that. So that's a red. So to get the exact color I used for this design, what I'll do is I'll pick my color picker tool that is um, somewhere here, and I'll choose it for my foreground. Then the black that I used to, I'll just pick my background and I'll choose the black so that it will not be going back and forth with the colors. If I'm speaking very fast, to please pardon me, that's how I talk very fast okay so um with this art ball selected i'll just use alt backspace to give my foreground color or you can just pick the paint bucket then you use it any way you want to use it but i use i mostly use shortcut for this color cluster so alt backspace for that one then we'll start from the heading so the heading i used this font um open sans Throughout all the all the serif fonts that you see there are all sorry all the sans serif fonts you see are all um, open sans and they are in different um, faces. That's we have the the regular, we have the um, ten, and we have the extra bold one. That's what I use for this one. And the font I use for this side is um, let me cross check. I don't really remember. You let's start from the top. As time goes on, we get to know the font I use for it. So I'll just draw um, my text box to insert the text. And then um, this one has a beep photography. So beep. Photography. Then I'll just choose my, um, where is my character window? Okay, I'll choose a character window like this. I'll just go to window character and I'll get my character window somewhere here. And I would select the font I want to use. That's I'll type in open sans. Open sans and I'll use um bold for this one. Then change it to all caps. That's the caps here and I'll get this. 
and I'll give it a um, this is like I'm really confused. This is vertical or horizontal? This um character spacing may be something around this area. Please, if I'm being I'm moving very fast to <laughs> let me know. It's that's how I work. So so I'll give it a, um, a character spacing like this. And I'll just press the check box to place it. So now we have this one done. Then we move on to the next one, that is the present. With that one, too, I'll just pick another text box, draw, and type in the present. And since I'm working with hierarchy, which is one of um, a composition for every design, that's one thing that every designer has to know about, hierarchy. That's how you arrange your, your text or your pictures. Since um, the present in this design is not something that is really relevant, because I can do away with it. I can just write beep photography, then I'll put here a photo contest, whatever. But since I want it to have a meaning to the reader, that the reader will know what the whole thing is about, you can put in there the present with a very small font size, so that it will not be something that is overshadowing the most important details of the design, which is, let's say, the heading. The heading is more important than the present. So that's why when you look at this design, I have um, the present to be smaller than the main heading of the program, just to not, not for it to take a lot of attention. So that's one aspect that I think most designers do, but maybe some don't know why they do that because they see it as if it's the people are making the present small, so let me also make it small. Present is not a relevant thing. It, it can be taken off when you are working with designs, but then you just add it for it to have a very good um, relation with the reader. So I'll just change the font size to something around around six or let's say seven, and I'll give it a character spacing, a little bit more than the one for the main heading. Then change the, the, the typeface as the, from the bold to regular, so that it can be more readable. And when you look at my character window, you see I have another bold, there's an extra, extra bold button here. This one, when, whenever you want to increase the boldness of a font, like for instance, this one has the, the maximum bold phase that you can get as extra bold. But if I want it to be more than the extra, an extra, extra to the bold that we have, it is a bit like that. So I'll use the regular with the bold here, check so that it can give it a little bit bolder face even. And I'll reduce this one. And I'll select bold text as in shift and click on the, and I text there, then I would press Control A to select the whole art board. Then use my um, vertical, the horizontal, yeah, horizontal center lines, and I'll click so that I'll get all of those two texts aligned to the art board I'm using for the design. So that's another way that you can use to sell, um, align text on on an art board or workspace. That's selecting or Control A to select the whole art board. Then you use your horizontal alignment to put everything in the middle as you want it, okay? So the next thing I did here was I, I did this thing here. You see, when you look at it, you have a photo contest, which is in an ARC format. There are a lot of ways you can do this. There's a, there are a lot of ways you can do it. You can just type it, then go to the wrap, then you just do it that way to get it turned like that. But I mostly, since I want it to be a little bit perfect, me, some way people say I'm a perfectionist, but something like that. So I want it to be perfect. Instead of me, just typing and using what's the name, the wrap to tend to like that. I'll rather create an over shape, something like this. I'll just pick my um, ellipse tool, then create something around this. Why? That's so an, over, an over shape. An, an over shape like this. And I'll pick my type tool, then click on the outline of the, of the over shape that I have. Then I'll just type whatever I want to type. And in this case, we have a photo contest like that. So I will reduce the horizontal um, word spacing. I'm sorry, character spacing like that. Then increase the font size to something around 16, which is too much. So let's say let's let's leave it at 11. 11 not bad. So let's bring this one down. 
and I'll change the typeface to bold. Then when you look at the, I don't know if you can see it, when you look at this um, oval shape with the text around it, you see this round thing that looks like an anchor point. This, this point, when you press on the control here, it will give you this thing. And clicking on this, you can be able to rotate the text. That's control click on it. And moving your mouse to the left side of your, your, your space, it will be rotating the text. Okay. And if you want to do it another way, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. another way to just do it that way, click this one. It has, them, um, three points. Um, it, has, it has three points, one for the center, one for the left, one for the right. So anyway, you want to center your work, you can use these points to center them. And in this case, we have it somewhere around here. So I'll use the left one, then shift it somewhere around here. They maybe increase the font a little bit to something around 11.5. Sorry. Yo. Please, guys, mute yourselves and please, please mute yourselves. So, something around, let's say 12 will be okay for this one. So, let's place it. So, this one is placed. So, now I can, I can remove my. I can remove my um, over shape from there so that I can get a space then, have it somewhere here. So the next one is um, the captured thoughts. So when you look at this, this text, for instance, it's, the text itself is, is a, a caps text. The font is a caps font. That's all the characters in it, no matter how they are, whether in capital or small letters, they appear like caps text. So when you look at the one I have, like for instance, the captured area, for instance, it's a small, it's a capital C, small A, small P, small T, um, small U, small R, a small E, then a capital D. I will tell you the reason why I made the end in a capital D. Then when you come to the down part, so that's the thoughts. Everything there is a small letter. That's how the font is. And um, let me see, I think the font, yeah, the font is um, network free, network, the font is network. So maybe after the class, I will just upload it to the, to the cloud so that everybody can download it and practice it on their own. So we we'll just move to the where does it captured that then network. Okay. Now we we'll use the vertical um, sorry the um, horizontal alignment to make it a little bit closer, then increase the font size. Sorry, my caps is on. Sorry. Okay, so something around here. Then I place it here. You can even place it anywhere after the whole thing. I will do the arrangement. The next one is a tort. Then that one too. Let's place it somewhere after everything. And we just rearrange them. So basically this, this is the text. This is how the whole thing is. This is how the whole thing is. But after everything, I'll just position everything as they were, as they are the photo contest and the line under it, then everything. So let's, let's move on to the line under the photo contest. So that after everything, then I'll just do the arrangements and we'll move on to the other side of the text. So what I did with that one was I just took my rectangular tool and I just drew a line, a rectangle, something like this. Then I change the properties. When you go to properties, we have the rounded, like the, the property that can make you round all the edges of your triangle or your square, sorry, your square or your rectangle, any way you want to do it. You can do it to the left, the, the lower right, the, any way you want to do it. But with this one, it's all the edges rounded. Fine, you can use the rounded rectangle, but when you even use the rounded rectangle, you will come to the same point by making every side of it round. So I'll just take one side and I'll just, um, increase it to any level I want and it will round all the edges of the rectangle I have there. Then let me change the font color to white, uh, sorry, the shape color to white. So let me look at the thing, it's now rounded, which looks like what I have here. So with this one, what I'll do is I'll just pick it, let's place anywhere, then I'll just control T to bring the, um, anything it's called, I don't know. So you just get it like that. Then I'll click on my wrap tool, come to my custom, that's at the side. 
or you can right click on it and still get the same thing. And I'll choose ARC. So when you choose the ARC, you get something like this. And the ARC next to the where you have the name ARC, you have other properties there. So we have the bend, we have the horizontal and the vertical. But then what you're going to do now is we won't just reduce the bend. It's just the bend I want to reduce. So I'll just slide it to the left to reduce the bend like that. Now get the bend reduced a little to whatever I want it to be. So something like this, then I just place it like that. Okay. So we have that one too, done. I think this one is a little bit bigger. So, okay. So now we are now to, um, um, and I'm coming to arrange the capture tool to, for you to fit as this one is. So when you look at the thing, it's, it's a very clumsy term, type typeface. It's a very clumsy typeface. So with working with um, typefaces like this, if you're not really smart a little bit, your work will look like some, some shabby work, a work that you were in a rush to do it. So with this one, I think it took me, it took me some time for me to even get it rearranged just like that, bringing some of the text up, sending some down, and those kind of stuff to get the thing like this. So with something like that, we just, let's start with the thoughts first so that we can position the thought better, then we'll move on to the rest. So one way you can do it is you just reduce, like get the, the thoughts a little bit closer. You reduce the vertical um, character spacing a little bit for it to be something like this, like that, or any way you want it. Then you just shift it a little bit, or either you can even reduce the font size a little. So you get something around this area. Then you just position it somewhere there. Maybe somewhere around here. Then since the, uh, the capture is aware that that is that was the focus of the guys. That's that's that was their focus. That was their focus. So I just had to increase it a little bit, a little bit, then something like that, then fix the tot in between the word like that. Then this one, I think my shape was too big. So let's I place it somewhere here. So my band too is too much, right? Let's let's I just want you to understand the concept that I used and the typography that I'm using. So let's let's not even take a um, take a look at it. Yes focus on those ones. So with this one, I just I just took my, um, that's a photo contest. Now, instead of me going back to that rectangle shape and everything, I ignored it and what I did was I just um, rotated it to fit the to get a gap between um, that and the rectangle shape there. For it to look like that, it's something that was wrapped around the rectangle, but it wasn't wrapped around. It was, it was two things I did, and I just tried to use my eyes to gauge the spacing. Okay, we have, let's do it like that. So let me just bring it somewhere, then get in like that. So, this is our model. I got a picture from um, Unsplash. Unsplash does come. There's another site where you can get a lot of wonderful pictures with high resolution for your artworks. So, I got that. So, my model is placed doing what I have here. That's the end of the model. And the team for the module. There are a lot of um, cheats that I can use. I can try to enter those fonts, enter those fonts separately, and place the gene behind and in front. Or another way I can do it, I can write tot, the layer, the tot, I can duplicate, rasterize it, then cut out the, the H and bring it in front. So I can have this small trick thing here that if you don't take notice of it, you might leave it there to make your work some way. That the H has an extension above the T. So that's another way. But with this one, I tried, I tried, I learned something that most of people do. That's masking your image and erasing the edges to what's name to get it like that. So by way, any way that we can do it, we just use that way to do it. And then please a minute. Let me let me work on it.
So with a masking, what you do is you can reduce the opacity of your object behind your model. Then you'd you'd click on the um, layer mask like that. Then you pick your brush tool. That's your brush tool. Then you make sure your your um, foreground color is black so that you can erase some part of the whole thing. So you can pick it, then you just erase like that. Erase everything, and we'll do a clean up of the edges of the thing. Then you do this one too. The T2 is font. Okay. Because this area too. Okay, so I think this is one that most of you know about it. If you don't know too, let me talk about it. When you are working with layer mask, when you use black, it subtracts. And when you use white, it adds. So looking at these edges that we have here, that's the edges around the J and the H and the T. They are they are not um, places that we want to have it um, subtracted from our selection. So what I will do is I'll just um, click on my press on my X on the keyboard to rotate the foreground, the background color to make it a foreground. And I'll just carefully brush around the edges of my text like that. This one takes a lot of time. So just try to bear with me a little. Oh, there's another way too you can do you can just crop or you can crop the letters. You can just use a pen tool to just um, crop them out. Then use um, you just delete those areas around the place that you need so that you can still get your text. And that one will even be sharper than working with this one. But then you let's let's go through with this one. If this one delays, then we use that method to get it simple so that you can just move on with that. So I have pressed the X again to and I'm using my um open bracket, the open and close bracket, not as in the normal painters, the, the square bracket to increase and reduce my brush sizes. So X again to bring my black brush and brush on the edges. And also with this thing, you can you can um, reduce the hardness of your brush. That is, um, I think now it's it's at fives. Sorry, it's it's at zero. So I can increase the hardness a little bit so that I can make can get it more harder instead of it being soft for it to have that um, flares around the edges. So I've just I've now increased the hardness of the brush a little bit so that I will not get those soft edges.
please bear with me. Let me just finish with this one so that I can. So I think we can work with this one. So since I'm done, let me increase the, the opacity back for me to get my model. So I think I have my model complete now. So um, let's continue with it. So when you look at the, the, the work that I, ha I had, I gave the model some fake shadows here for it to look like she is a little bit away from the, the background that I have. So with this one, I think um, I created a, a normal drop shadow. That's another way you can do it. So a normal drop shadow, then I will increase the, the distance, the size, and shift it a little bit somewhere here, and increase the size a little bit more. Then reduce the opacity. That is one way. And yeah, so that's one way to do this, something like this. Then there's another way that you can do it. Since I want the thing to just be around somewhere here, body, what I can do is I'll just pick my pen to then start from somewhere here, draw a rough sketch somewhere here. Say somewhere here. Something around here. Then create a new layer, a blank layer. Right click on it. Then control backspace to apply my um, background color. Control D to move the marquee. Then go to my filters, go to blur, then Gaussian blur to add the blur effect to it. Then increase the blur a little bit to get something like this. Then I would put that one behind my image like that. Then reposition it to get that effect. Just as you have applied um, uh, uh, drop shadow to it as you want it. And if the blaze, the, the Gaussian blade or the blade effect you're having is not that much, you can still go back there. I should have made my um, my layer um, a smart object so that I can just edit it from the I didn't do it that way, so I have to go back and then. Um, select my Gaussian blur again, then increase the blur a little bit. Give me to get that fake shadow effect like that. So yeah, let's let's work with this because of time. So I have it like that, and then when you look at this design, um, honestly, when I was working with this, a lot of this, um, yeah. Lord of, yeah, yeah. I, th I think um, as you made yeah. me the host, it's coming through my account, so I don't think there'll be a limit. Oh, okay, 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 no I problem. I think you can no take problem. your time and no digest everything. Okay, no problem. Okay, so so looking at this design that I have here, um, when the guys brought the text, actually what they brought was little. It was just the dates and the, the fee. But later I realized they were bringing a lot of text, a lot of text. So I was a little bit board because I don't like working a lot of text because it makes you think too much how to compose them, how to put them on your design to get something that is not crowdy, like something that doesn't look like it has a lot of information. Because if I'm to show you this this thing in normal word text, you see it's a lot of it's a lot of um, text like that. But I try my best to use a left align because I have an image which is occupying a lot of space. So I would say this design is something more of around a symmetric kind of, if I'm wrong to, somebody can correct me. Kind of, that's the idea I use, because looking at this whole design that we have here, if it's to be um, a beam balance or anything that we stands, you see the image here is just an image with some few texts that are not carrying a lot of weight. But then looking at the image like that, the image is heavy. Look at the image, it's heavy. There are a lot of things going on there. She has shoes, she has jeans, she has some, some hood, she has, she's there she's very heavy so if something like this you put the person in the middle it's not bad but when the moment you put her in the middle and you send the text to the side your design is not balanced the moment you place her in the middle and you send the text to the side she's not balanced the design is not balanced 
But since I wanted to have a design which is very balanced, if it doesn't, it doesn't look balanced, to, I stand to be corrected. You can correct me. So I wanted it to look balanced. That's why I placed her on the left, then aligned the text to her left. That is aligned it to the left, like the way you see it, like that. So that's the concept. It's nothing weird. It's just like, I just wanted to balance the design because I could have used something like a right align, which, which some people do because they say negative spacing. They want negative space. So they would rather let the text start from the right to the left. But I me, mean, I don't, I didn't want it like that. So I started to start from the left to the right as it is like that. So with stuff like every text you see here or every sentence you see is a different layer. That's how I do my work. So a simple design like this, if I show you the, P, um, the PSD file, it has a lot of layers. I don't like adding all my text together because at times increase the face of some, I make some bold, I make some thin, those things. So I don't want it to be like, when you increase the boldness of one font, it would join the one at the top line or something. So I just prefer creating all my text or everything on a separate layer. So that, that's how I did this one. So starting from where we have the who can apply, I gave it a black background for it to be something that is noticeable, something that people would easily identify with. Because if I had added the, what's the name there, who can apply this text to the red background as this one is, it will not be relevant. And I don't want to do any just things we had there, anything that will make it look libre, because a lot of people will do a lot of things who do plenty of things, but I wanted to keep the whole design very simple, very simple like that, because it's, also, it's, also really, it's already having a lot of text. It has a lot of text. So I chose the black as a background to give an emphasis on the who can apply. So you just pick your rectangle tool, then you pick, you draw, which you can, when you, use, when you press shift and you're using the rectangle, it becomes a square, but I don't need a square. So I will not need any shift to assist me to draw this. So just draw it like that. I already have my four, um, sorry, my shape color selected to black, already black. So have it black and I'll just type in who can apply. With a normal sentence case. A sentence case is um, one that starts with a capital letter. That's after a punctuation before you can or let's say a full stop before you can add, start with another um, capital word. So it's a sentence case that I use. So I'm, I'm, I'm now using, I, and I'm a designer too who likes using the vertical and character spacing. I like using them a lot. So with the designs I'm doing, you see me using this particular one, even more than the, horizontal and vertical alignment and the other ones. So like that. So just change the font size a little bit for you to fit. Question mark. You mean the horizontal? I don't like using the sorry, I like using the horizontal more than the vertical. Sorry, thank you for the correction. Thank you. Okay. So I have it there. Then I'll pick my text tool again and draw a text box. I got, I already have my um, text typed, so I'll just pick it then. So it's student of the University of Allied Health Sciences. And I'll just paste it yeah, like that. Then the vertical alignment to reduce the, the word spacing or the line spacing there. Mm -hmm. And let's use regular, then add this bold to it to give it a little bit bolder typeface. Even though it's just a regular font, it looks a little bit um, bolder than the normal regular open sans. So that's that's the thing. Like that. Then to make the whole work diff, um, simple, I'll just duplicate. So that's a alt, click and hold and drag. Or you can use control J to duplicate it. Like so, like that double click on it, increase the text box a little bit. Then go back and copy what I had there. Okay. And paste now on to like that.
So and then next one to I can still do the same thing, just copy this application deadline. Then increase this one a little bit since it's it's different from the ones above. There's a different a different um thing on the design itself. It's also another information that you want to put across. So I have to put a little bit emphasis on that one by increasing the the font. But then I'm still putting um putting in consideration the hierarchy when it comes to typography. I don't still it's fine, it's it's important. The application date or deadline is very important, but it's not important than the date itself so if i'm um, if for instance i make application deadline bigger that most people to do they can make this word big then make the dates small that is that's so wrong because application deadline doesn't send any information if it's it will send any information to any any reader there's no need for you to even add a date so it's best that considering hierarchy 18 january 2020 is the most important thing um when you take this information around here that's the most important because i can I can just make it maybe AD, something like application deadline. When they ask the application deadline, they will understand. But then if you make this one so big, like this font size, application deadline big, then you make the 18th January very small, like this one, all in the name of you are trying to follow concepts. It's wrong. That one, honestly, it's wrong. I, do, I don't need anybody to even tell me. I'm just saying what, it's wrong. These two informations here, date is important than the application deadline. So you can you can even choose to even make the application line very smaller. Because when somebody just chance upon that word and is able to read it from even that small size, they will know what you're talking about. And they will know, okay, the thing has a deadline. That's the 18th. So that's why I kept mine like that. I didn't make this one big and that one small. So that's why I kept it like that. Then just place it somewhere here. And again, duplicate this one. Increase the test box, then type in the day 18 January dot 2020. Okay, increase the font size a little. And working with this thing too, I'm just putting in position my, my alignment with the text. I don't want any text to be extremely outside the box. Like, I don't want any like some of the text to be, like I say, way, way, way not in the margin that I have. So for instance, if I had used a rule somewhere here or a guide somewhere here, this is my last point because I have margins with my work. That's something that I often do. I just draw these things here to just get margins around my designs like that. So like that. So I don't want any text to go beyond my margins. And there's another thing to have I've stated. I like observing people's design. You might even tag me with a design. I will not even comment. I will just look at it and move on like that. I just look at all these things. If I'm working with you, like, sorry, if, if you are working for me and you bring a design to me and your margins are so close to the, to the, the edges of the design, like somewhere around there, no matter how good you are, I mean, I don't see you to be a good designer. Because assuming if you are working in a, in a press and you forgot to add some bleed to the edges of your work, if you don't take time, when they are cutting the work, they might end up cutting some of your text. No matter how good you are, people can even heal you if your margins are bad. I, mean, I don't see you to be like that. Right, so that's another thing that a designer should at least um, incorporate into their work. Always try to use it to use the guides to get some good margins, like good, good, clean margins around their work. So back to this one. Increase the bold, then okay, more so something like this. Then horizontal space and in a little bit, then like that. Okay. So the next one is the apply. Application apply with only. Okay. 
Okay, so when you look at this side, somebody will ask, you, you said you are using a left align, but then your only Ghana cities looks like they are right aligned. The reason why I did it, I did it that way is I wanted to get some kind of effect around this area. I didn't want it to be so close to the side because when the, the only comes to where the A is, I can't push this, um, what's the name there, three there, this point of the three to fit that area, to close the gap there. Because if you do it that way, it will, become, it will have some spaces in the work that will not make it more compact. That's why I decided to use an alignment, which is something like that. But I was also keeping in mind that I have to make sure all the, all the text here fall on the same left align field thing. So that's why I made it that way, to close the gap between the, the three and the text at this side. So only. All caps. Move. Ghana, GAC. Have that one. Then the last text that I have there is register to register. So this is the text. But after everything that I did, after everything I am, after typing everything in place, I realized that if I'm to leave the text this way, it looks it looks like it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any, it, sorry, it doesn't have anything that um, that makes it very that make, that will make it enjoyable when you are reading it. So I decided to add these lines here to just bring some separation to the items that I have there, because every item there is different. Everything there is very different from each other. So I just picked my line tool, then increased the, um, the width. I don't think I used eight, something around five. Then I just drew something around here. Then control J to duplicate so that I can get the exact same line length and everything. Last one. Okay. How is that? So can group them and just give them one color. Right? So it will be easy to work with. Then move it behind my my model. Around here. Get something like that. Then the next thing was the shape that we have here. That's the that's another important thing they wanted me to highlight the most. So I just brought it down here. Gave it a black background again as I did for the apply to bring some uniformity in there. I could have gone. I would have gone ahead to choose something, maybe a darker shade of this, something like that, to bring a little bit contrast with the colors. But I, I chose to still go with a black, because that's the color that I want to use as a background for a text that you want to emphasize. People are going to really notice it, so that's why I used this one. And I placed my text in here with 
pictures with picture with the highest likes. Explanation and increase that. And made all of them bold. And when you look at the design I, I, I had here, I used um, different colors for the likes and the IG. That's the one, that one too. Still, we are talking about the emphasis. We are still on the emphasis. This is the most important thing that they wanted to let their um, audience know about. That's the likes and where, if you get the likes, you're going to win. That's why I chose, instead of me either making them capital letters or making them bigger than the other text, I decided to let it flow in the same font size, the same font typeface, then rather change their font colors with the red that I'm going with. That's the theme, the red theme that I'm using. The same thing, I just color picker, then have it like that. Then again, control A to select everything, then horizontal alignment, control D, then shift it up a little. So I have that side too, done. Then we are moving on to where we have the prizes. This side, after the whole work, I realized that the red I used wasn't the right color for me to use, but I already used it. So I just went ahead and sent it, uh, sent it to them and they also liked the red that I used for it. So it was like a damn deal, but in normal sense, putting a red on a, uh, on, on a black with a font um, style like this is wrong, it's wrong. Don't think I did it so it's right, it's wrong. But then I thought it was, it was nothing. And it was later that I said to them, I realized actually, be like, boy, you do your work. So I had to just leave it like that as they wanted. So I just left it like that. So with the circle, just pick your ellipse to draw again, shift to get um, approximate size. Like that, then I, I give the drop shadow. That is drop shadow. Move it to the right a little. Increase the opacity and increase the size. Like that. And you can still draw it a little bit away from the person or the model. Okay. So like that. So I would I would ignore the text because I think I've I've typed enough. So we'll just leave it like that. So um, see, this is something close to what I did. It's it's a little bit close to it. It's not exactly the same thing, but something close to when you look at it, it's like it's the same design that is duplicated on the other side. So um, that's that. But this one I used an off white for the whole theme for the text. But here I'm using a white to just make it a little bit different. So everything after everything I did, one thing I did was I added a, a green texture. That's a, um, a noise to the design. That's one thing that I was also a, a small thing that I got from somebody. So I added some noise effects to the background and the text, excluding the image. And this is how I did it. What I did was I just created a new layer above all everything that I've done. Control um, backspace to give it a, the fog and background color, which is black. Then use the screen on it like that. Then I'll just go to my um, filter, noise, add noise like that. So I have my noise and we have two types of noises. I have the uniform, which is a little bit, the tone is a little bit mild as compared to the Gaussian one. So we'll just choose the uniform, bring it down a little bit, or I will just use the Gaussian and bring it down a little bit. And after everything, I'll just look for my model, press control and click on the thumbnail to select the model. Then just go to my black layer again, just press delete to take it out. So where the model is, there's no um, noise there. That's when I zoom in, you see it. She is not having any noise. Had, the picture already had a noise in her clothing. So the picture had already had noise. So I didn't have, have to add any noise to it again. So with this one, I can bring the shape above it to get it like that. And think that's that. So that's the design that I did. So please, if there's any question, um, you can ask them. We'll move on to the next one. Um, about the, the noise part, can you, can you go through that again? 
Okay, so, sure. No problem. So, okay, so. Hello. Yeah, we are here. Yeah. Okay. So what I did was I created a, a layer above all the all the um, text that I had, the, the layers that I had. I created a, a hello. Kendrick, you tell us something. Come to a crack. Come to a crack. Oh, come for there. <laughs> you mess up. Oh. So okay. So what I did was I just created a, a blank layer. That's a new layer above every layer that I had, because I wanted the noise to be applied to everything. That's including the, the text go on, go on. and including the... Go on with this. Uh, Bryce, I, Bryce, I, I mean, your line is breaking. Yeah, I'm, I'm redoing it. I'm, I'm doing it again. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing the noise again. That's what I'm doing. So what I did was, let me delete this one. Okay, let me delete this too. Okay. So what I did was, I created a layer. I just selected the first layer I have on my on my layers panel. Then clicked on the new layer. Then gave me a blank layer. Then I use Control Backspace to apply black. Since I'm going to screen it to the to the background, as the design is going to be screened. And screen is something that makes it 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 doesn't it doesn't really apply much to the the colors that you have as compared to if I was to use something around maybe overlay or something that is going to change my design. So either you go for lighting or you use screen. But lighting will at times change your color a little bit. So I'll just choose screen like that. Then go to filter and add noise. I'm sorry, noise, then add noise. Then you can choose any of the, um, the noise distributions that I have here, whether the uniform or the Gaussian, any one that you want, depend on the color scheme that you have and the effect you want to achieve after. Then we have the amount here. To the amount, you can increase it way to the top, depending on what you are doing. Or you can bring it way down. So I will just leave it somewhere around 13.9, somewhere like that. Then click on OK. And, and the design, when you look at this one that I have here, you see there's noise at the background. I don't know if you can see it. OK. I removed the noise when I was trying to copy the files from there. So, but there was a noise in the actual design. If you can, you can check it on my Instagram. I think the, the, it's there. There was some noise there, but then what I did was I selected this model because she already had noise in the picture that I downloaded. She had noise on the image already. So I just wanted to reduce the noise here by taking it out of the noise effect that I'm applying to my text. So I just went through my layers, located the model, which is this one, click control, click on the thumbnail, then went back to the black layer that I have above all my layers and pressed delete to take her out so now she's out she's not having any green effect on her skin and the clothes then control d and i'll place my ellipse tool on on that area that had cut out like that so that is that's how i did it okay okay i think it's it's clear now thank you Okay. But I also okay. mentioned something about the red on black um, that you said you realize you did the hour. I think some of us, uh, you don't get that. Yeah, that's, right. that's, that's the price. It's, it's bad because um, it's not bad as in for some fonts. The font I used there is a little bit a script font. It's too fancy to use on a black background because if I'm to zoom out like this, honestly, you can't read what I have there. But then with all the other text that I have there, you can, you can easily read what, yeah, um, what is there. So that's why I said it's yawa. Because a script font like this, which is so fancy like this, in a red color on a dark, and the red shade too is not a bright red, it's a mild red. So having it on, on a black background makes it very um, difficult for the eyes to read it. So that's why I was saying I made it with the color that I chose. So, okay, so please, can, can you like a white or something? Yeah, a white, or I could, I could have even, the, the text be, um, below it was, had a cream and a white mixture like that. So I could have made this one a uh, white so that it would balance where I have the few photo shoots. Because when I zoom in, you see this one is off white, this one is white. So I could have balanced it to get some uniformity here and made this one white. But then I think maybe I was tired or I was frustrated because they're giving me more information. So I decided to do it like that. Okay. 
Can you please uh, take us through the, the arc again with the, the shape, the rectangle shape, how you did that? Yeah, okay, if you could do sure, that. no problem. Let me create another layer for it. Okay. So um, I picked my rectangle too, that's a normal rectangle. Just drew a rectangle like that. A rectangle like that. And I press Control T. Then you can right click and go to wrap. Oh, sorry, wrap. Say wrap, wrap like that, or you can locate it somewhere around here. Here, just click on it. Then you have these options at the top. And you have the custom, that's where you have all the arc styles that you want, there are a lot of them, a lot of them. And you can apply the same effect to text, normal text too. So I chose the arc, and I didn't want the arc to be this bent. You can bend it more, you can get it more bent, like that, you get an arc like that. But I want it to be a little bit straight and I think I'm having a little bit arc in it. So I reduced it instead. I reduced the bend. Please let me escape and let me do one thing that I did. Okay. So what I also was doing, I said, I changed the edges. You see, this one has sharp edges. I could have, I could have chosen the rounded rectangle it already has some round edges like that. But when I choose this rounded rectangle, they are two different um, rectangles, but I'll still do the same thing to them. This one has the edges to be rounded, but still what I wanted to do, I, I would have still changed the edges to round the same thing as this one too. Wow. Like this one too, like that. Hello, please, can you hear me? Yes, please, we, we are listening. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. So like that then, I just control T to bring a transform. Then the, the warp, custom arc, then just reduce the bend a little bit to give the kind of bend you want, either this or that. And this thing, you can apply it to text too. So I can just type something like maybe um, Kofi, like that, increase it, Control T. Sorry, I have to rasterize it first. So rasterize the layer first. Control T to bring a transform, then warp, custom, arc, the same thing. I just reduce the bend. Anyway, well, the bend, it goes as far as negative, so you can change it to, depending on what you are doing. So like that. Please, are you okay? Oh, th yes, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, um, can you show how, how you retouch your images for your artwork? If you can just okay. give us like maybe 10 or 15 minutes of that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me see if I, if I can get some image. Okay, let me, let me, <laughs> let me, let me use this image. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I have this one. This, 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 this image was a little bit retouched when I got it. Like, it has a little bit retouching to it. Because they downloaded the image, so. But we can still work on it a little bit. But I'm, I'm not really perfect with retouching images. So, please bear with me. Right? I'm, not, I'm not a photographer. I'm just a graphic designer. So let me just do what I can do. So I use the um, camera raw filter. That's either you use Control shift a to bring it, or you go to your filters, then you go to camera raw. It's loading. Okay, so I have it here. So these are all the settings here. Me, I don't use all of them. I use the ones I, I, I can use. I don't do too no, so I use the ones I can use. So mostly I use, I don't like using exposure because exposure really um, reduces the, the contrast of your image. For instance, this image has a very good lighting with it, like the, the shadows casted on the side, the highlights in the middle, it's really beautiful. But if I'm to use exposure, this is what's going to happen. So I really don't use my exposure. I just always leave that where it is, like that. And I rather increase my contrast. Then if I think the contrast is making the thing too, too oily or rich, then I'll just add a little bit of highlight to it. Highlight to it. I don't know if you are seeing it. It's having some small effects to it. Like that. Then I come to my shadows. If the shadows are, like this one has, cool shadows, but I can still increase my shadows a little bit by sliding to the left, not to the right. So I'll slide to the left a little bit to increase my shadows a little bit. 
Okay, this one will make it white, so let's say somewhere around here. And it's even too much. Then we use my white a little bit. Then add a little black to it. Then, and then if I want the face to be have the, the lines of the like on the person's face to be like more or more like revealing, I'll just increase my clarity. Just increase it. Uh, get something some effects like that. Please don't pardon me with that blue blue thing. So that's that's you get something like this, just like the contrast, but in a different way. So when you apply apply a contrast, but it adds a, more coloring to the to the what's the name the photographers. Maybe you can correct me to the image that is there. So I just leave it away. It's that's zero. Then at times too, I add a little bit, by, or maybe but I hardly I hardly increase it to the color side. That's what it is without troubles. And I come to the side as a detailing. Then I don't touch anything on the sharpening side. And I go to the luminance, bring it up contrast. The luminance, what it does is it smoothens the skin like that. So the more it goes up, the more the person's skin becomes smoother. And at times it can be so artificial. So that's is, that is with the luminance, that's what it does. Then can increase the color and the color details a little and add a little smoothing to it. So that's how I edit my pictures. These are the things I use for my pictures. Oh, shit. Kendrick, fire, you mess up for it, actually. I, realize, I beg you one thing. Eh? I realize oh, I'm at times you can um, maybe put a picture there, but then you realize that the picture looks isolated. The way you, 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 you use this girl on the uh -huh. like, it looks like she matches with the background, like she blends away uh -huh. to achieve that. Um, the times you go and well, this... a picture somewhere, you bring it in. What, what you can do is you can add some adjustment layers to it. For instance, maybe with this image, if it was something like, let me see if, let me see if I can change her skin color a little bit to something around maybe um something around here. And let me make it a little bit pale. See, she looks a little bit different as compared to so this. This one has some reddish to her skin, so it makes it look like it's blending with the design. So something like this, what you can do is you can just pick the adjustment layers, go to something like maybe um hue and saturation, or you can add color balance, these two are vibrance. Let's say you let's use a color balance like that, for instance. So you can choose a color. Okay. Okay, so something like that. Let me let me clip it to the layer. So I can just increase these ones. Or uh, yeah, let me use a highlight a little. Yeah. Increase the cyan a little bit. Then the yellow to a little. So see, so it will give it a little bit blend and make the thing look like they are they are together. So that, but most often I I don't really do them here. It's true the retouching the was camera raw that I do those things. And it's it's I think it's just it just moves off like that. Because I don't plan to do them like that. It just happens. Then that might the whole thing I do. But then one thing I do is most often when I'm working with my designs, my colors are always either picked from the the, the pictures in the or I just pick um, colors that are relating to the concept I'm working with. 
the red is small, but it's a dominant color in the lady's shirt that she is wearing. So I'll pick a red from there. And black too is nice. And I already have my white or off-white to blend. It's fitting well because I pick the colors from her, her dress since she's the main focus of the design. So that's one thing I do. That's why it happens um, like that. Okay. So I, I've been on your page a lot. If you ask uh, Divinity, he will tell you. Stop like, stop I, <laughs> he says, stop her from her. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I stop you a lot. And I, and I realized you have this technique i don't know how you do it but you are you are able to combine text to form a whole look on its own like you're able to maybe okay so let's say capture captured thoughts right so you take the okay. e and the t and then you do something with it i i would like you to just give us a little insight into how you are about like how you come about it, like how you're able to transform those texts to mesh together and then form Title um, I wish I wish you can show me something relating to what you're talking about, so that I can I can really understand right. what you are saying. Uh, Lodell, I think I can. Uh, uh, right, mm-hmm. Channel. Yo. Yeah, so are you are you still sharing your screen? Your okay. question to me. Okay. If I'm right, then you take it from there. Yeah. So I think what like a look. Yeah, my screen is on. Yeah. <clears throat> Lodell, do you get me? I'm yeah. So it's, let's say it's a church program, yes. and the church program says. Uh-huh. Focusing on the main caption, you compose it to look like a logo on its own. Like they are different texts, but you put them together to look like one whole text before you have the date and the time aside. Mm. So he wants you oh, okay. to explain what, how. I say, what, what is the question behind those things? Is most often when I'm designing, I'm not somebody who knows how to do this 3D stuff. Like I don't know how to do it. I don't like to. I don't know how to do it. And then also, I don't really know how to fit a lot of a lot of. Um, objects in the background. Like you have a plenty of objects, like who have horses, those things. I don't know how to do the um, captions. That's, well, that's one year I, I decided to just learn a lot and follow a lot of people like graphics. He's on Pinterest too. He's very good at those things. He will just take his um, team and just play around those things to make it just more admirable, even more than the design. So that's one thing that I, I realized, okay, Caesar Graphics too doesn't do those kind of stuff. He doesn't really put in a lot in his background, but he does more on his text. So I was like, okay, let me also try and do it. So something like that thing So What I did was, I saw it was straight. The colors I used were just moving white. So I decided, okay, if it's just conference, then why do, let me see if I can find a design that yeah, can yeah. talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think I think I have it somewhere. Yeah. That totally. Please pardon me, my machine there. It no be, no be i seven. I beg. So don't give me a make it notes. It is like the i twelve, i twelve. Yeah, uh, like i one or something like that. Oh, I I the I inside. Okay, so something like this. So um, with this design, the, the theme that I was given, the caption I was given was just this, this conference. And Jesus is just a simple word. What can you do with Jesus to have, shall I, J, to get something like a cross effect? That was the idea. Just mm-hmm. having a cross effect in there. So what I do, I just, I just picked, it's, I did everything in Photoshop. Nothing was done in Illustrator or anything. So let's say Jesus effect. And the font I used was, I think, Playfair or something like that. I'm not really sure, but I think something like it will be, it will work. Make sure it will work. It's a sun serif, so, so something like J, and then I can type the whole thing to cry, Jesus, like that, then play fair. Use this one. Okay. So I have something like this. So this is a font. So basically what I'll do is, since I want to manipulate the font, I'll just do everything I want to do with the font. If I want to reduce the um, horizontal space, I'll do it. Anything I want to do, I'll do it before I move to the next stage. Because the next stage is rasterizing. Either you duplicate 
or you just leave the layer you are using like that. But me, I don't like keeping unnecessary layers. Because if I'm not using that, I don't keep them. So I'll rasterize this one. Then something like that. And I'll just pick maybe the pen tool or something. Draw something around here. Maybe something like this. Then control, right click. Then fill it with a foreground color like that. And since it's a different layer, I'll just try to move it to a place that I think is right. Increase the size to the size that I want. Any way I want it, I'll just, I want it. So like that, something like that. And I'll just select all of them, if everything is okay. Okay, I think I'm having some mix somewhere. So if everything is okay with me, I'll just, Control E. <laughs> then that's that. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that. So it's just the tools now. It's just the pen tool now. I can just use it and do something around here. Just something like this. Mm. Just add unnecessary shapes and effects to it. Just like that, and have something. Then we are just moving on. Then we just apply everything to it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ciao. 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 That, that, that's how I do it. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Why you to set up? <laughs> you, I can't do but you make you do your. <laughs> So I think that, that's, that's, that's it, that's it. That's basically how I do it. Yeah, I'm not a professional, so I just use the small, small things and I'll just use it to do that. Damn, damn, damn. Charlie, this is mind-blowing. Yeah. So that's, 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 that's it. But the same thing I can I can do it in Illustrator. That one will probably even be simple because you can get points to just expand them to get this effect, but that one too is another. It's, that's Divinity's side. He likes doing those things. Yeah, he's the, he, he likes that the star, boss star, in the star, star, star. Yeah. He, can, he can even, yeah, he, that, I'm sure Kapo said that this time, I look very desired, I did it in the street. The boss himself. himself, you see the head. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, so I, uh, please, is there any other question that, so that if not, then I'll just move on to the, Next one, and I'll see if I can do something small with a recent post I did on Instagram. That's the most recent recent post I did. This I think this was the design. Uh, Lodell, will you be yeah. touching on colors? How you do your color combinations? Yes, I was even about asking that question, but I just wanted to give him. Yeah. To, um, yeah because okay. so, are they so, okay, let's, you? Let's... Are they match you boot to boot? Something like bang Masa, bang 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 Yeah, the colors. Bang bang of, oh, the colors, no. <laughs> Okay. 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 So let's 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 talk about that one. Right. Let's see if I can. Like, I can find. Okay. Let me look. At, let, let me look for that work then. See if I can find it then. Yeah. 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 That's that's my group. That's my group's work. So let me. Don't worry. I, I I won't force you to play nonsense. I'm only requesting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So this is the design he's talking about. Um. This is a design for my group. I I play bass guitar too. Alongside. That's what I used to get to the girls. Small. Small. So, um, hey, I play bass guitar. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this session is recorded about. for quality purposes, for training purposes. Hey, <laughs> Charlie, wow. Charlie. Oh, Charlie. This one, confession, live confession. Okay, so, um, this is a design. <laughs> hey, Charlie. This is a design. This is a design he, he's talking about. I think. Confession okay. so time. design. Oh, Charlie, this design I, it's something I learned from Kendrick himself. I think when I was I was on this group and GDG, I think most of you are there. He did some cover art some time ago with I think this duo tone thing. I, it got inter yeah. I got interested in it. I think I, yeah, I, I even asked him to even tell him about it. Like you should give me more tips on that. So I took it from there and I just learned from YouTube. Just added my own allo allo things and I got some stuff from it. So. So this is just a picture that we got from our, our previous program. That's a program we did before this one. 
a, pro, um, um, a program like a picture like that. I don't know if I still have it. And I applied a duo tone of a, of a, I think a pink to a dark move. A dark move giving me this effect. You let me explain after that. I'll try and see if I can do that duo tone thing to get it. And looking at this one too, you see I have the green, the texture or noise effect that I have. I, I, I was talking about another one on this design to make, give it a little bit realistic feel to the design like that. Then this color that you have here, this dark movish pink color, I don't know. The women who know the name, they give to this color. Quarantine so, move. This one, I, it's a color. Charlie, it's not easy. Quarantine move for a boy. <laughs> so I decided to choose a color between a red and um, a purple or a violet. That's, sorry, a pink and a violet. And that's where I got this color. And I think those who follow Premier, Champion, Premier League, English Premier League a lot, these are the colors they are using. This, this shade of the, um, the pink and this green, this I say mint green or whatever they call it. Those are the colors they are using. So that's one alone, that's, that's Premier League team. Gave me a, it, gave me, it gave me a serious thing. Like I really love that, that thing they were using. Oh, yeah. For the Premier League then. So I started to apply it to the design. And yellow works with um yellow works very well with white and the uh, this move I have here. So that's why I made the yellow just few few yellows and red dominate and white dominating and then the green taking some small, small parts. So that is that is and my color selecting colors for my design. I just add the colors when I'm inspired to, and even selecting a color for a design can even take me a day because I don't have people will tell you me when I'm coming to design, I'll take a pen and paper and write everything. I, I don't like I don't like I don't write anything when I sit behind my PC. I, I, what I'm inspired to do. So that's how I, I do my design. So that's why if you tell me to teach you how I did my design, it will take me some time to teach you. But it's a bad habit to do, but then that is me. To show you how I did the duo tone thing. Maybe we would call it a day. Anna Roshan. Well, let me see if I can get any picture here, then I can use it. Please, I'm looking for I'm looking for the design eh, so that we can just I can get the image from it. Hey, who is needing me? Hey, Charlie did me for her. Okay, so let's 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 go away. Okay, so I have the like this. Yeah, so here's a picture. Just expand it a little bit. What is that? Um. So I'm, I'm just coming to show you how I do my duo tone thing, show you so I can do it small like that. So um, I use gradient map, and it will come like this, like the normal gradients, like the normal gradient that you use. That's why it's called a gradient map. But this is where we do the duo tone things. And when you look at this, the dark sides are the shadows, and the bright sides are the highlight sides. So with this one, so if I'm to turn this thing, these um, sliders, to the opposite side. I'll get something like this. That is it. So now the dark sides are the shadows and the bright side are the highlight side. So what I did was I chose a pink, a dark pink for the shadows. And I think I chose something around a violet or something around here. I'm not really sure though, but okay, let me just go through. I might, I might get the, the exact shade I used for the pen.
that's the man. I can't find the colors. But then basically, <laughs> this is this is how I did it. I always, I always make sure that my shadows are the darker shade of what I want to do. Let's say I want to use these colors for my duo tone. Maybe um, let me take a rectangle to somewhere. These two colors, maybe I have this. Then maybe another shape of maybe a red, then pink, something like that. So, so like that. You always have to make sure that your the left side is always having the darker color that you want to use. So, for instance, if I want to use this one, I can pick it. Oh, sorry, pick no. Let me pick the color. Charlie, sorry, this is how I design. Oh. So boring. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. So let me pick the color. Anyway. Okay. So this, then, then I'll go for my um, highlight color. And I'll get something like that. And after the whole thing, I can just go to my filters, um, camera roll, then add a little bit um, clarity to the image, like make it a little bit clearer, make it a little bit contrasty, so that I can can get a little bit effect from it. Yeah. So if it's like that, anything, if it's something like, if even if you put a word like this, capital bold, then you give it a horizontal spacing like that, reduce the font size to something around this area. You center it, maybe I'll have to increase the, change the font to a better font. Something around, with the open sense will be okay. Center line, centered like that. If you post this, then I'll tell you, people will like it. Just like this. So it's, 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 it's nothing. My color, my color scheme thing there, I don't really plan them. So it's not something that I can really tell you I'm teaching you. I just do it based on the, the color themes. For instance, when you look at these, the, the original image that I used, it has these colors. It has red in it, it has blue in it, it has mauve in it, it has white in it. So how can I add it, even if I'm doing a dual tone to it? Something like that. Just take the dominant colors and see if those colors they can complement each other. Because some pictures or some some dresses that people wear for their shoot and the designs. And then I think there's another design that um, I did too that I can maybe I talk about about the colors. Um, Open this one so that I can. I think this 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 one will be my my last color thing. Then, if there's any question, then you can ask them. Hello, Roshan. Yes, what? Uh -huh. no, I think I'll, I'll, be, I'll be leaving it for Kendrick, Kendrick to also add something to the design thing because he wanted to talk about design stuff before he would tackle yes. his own. So, because, uh, of the, because of the um, the network problem, I don't want to change you, but we have to start another session. Then we'll be having Yeah, so we'll not start. He'll continue. We'll, he'll continue from yeah. um, wherever yeah. you'll you, 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 you sure, leave it. Sure, 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 sure. It's no problem. Kendrick. If we, who stay what for there? I say at the at the come end. I'm I'm about ending with this one. We we're just talking about this one. After this one, then I'll hand over to you for you to talk about the design stuff. All right, all right. And yeah, if nobody has a question, a, then because we don't want to yeah, end have a question they can ask then. Question, yeah. Then. Yeah, okay. they can ask. So this is the last one. From there. Yeah. So this this one thing, last thing I want to talk about. You... Is colors, and then, if there's any question, you can ask them. Yeah. So this this is another design that I did that I used grays, I used the mint green, and I used that 
color again, the pinkish red stuff color again. So it's it's something that I this this, this color they just came. I didn't plan it. It just came. I just found so those colors. I was I was initially using this gray and this color for the design, but I wanted to give the 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 emina in the seminar this word a different color. I didn't want it to be like this. Like to also have the same color as this one. It will be to be dull. See, it will be very dull. So I said, okay, let me let me just give it a color, a color that would that would really add up something to the design. So I decided to go with this color. And I just gave some of the, the speakers on it with the background with the same colors and the the the, the topic here to the father son relationship, which is the basis of the the seminar. That's the enhancing discipleship or something. Then I added that one to the then I blended it with a grayscale image to just to just take take the focus of it. Because if I was to give this one a colored image, like if this one had was supposed to be colored as it is, like I give an adjustment so I can take it off. Color like is it, it's 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 really um affecting my colors it's really having a serious effect on my colors it doesn't really work when look at it, it doesn't really work it looks weird like somebody is supposed to be a father and a son in the background but i wanted it to be there but having a low impact on my design that's why i added um, a black and white i just left it like that and i focused on my typo and everything to get to the design like that so please if there's any question or something we need to touch on i can touch on then kendrick will take over okay sure okay these are the, the fonts. Um, what fonts do you really recommend when you're actually writing the main um, font subject of the text? Like the formal stuff. The, um, you see, for instance, you've used um, like a script font for the seminar, but every other font, like the name of the church, the topic and all, uh -huh. what, what fonts do you normally recommend? Okay, me mostly I use I have I have I have a lot of fonts, but the fonts I like using are mostly the I have, I like using um sans serif font, like some like the I don't like using new, a new time showman. That one I don't like it. I can use any sans serif type, like the one I use for this one. That's the Playfair. I like using those ones. Then when it comes to serif fonts, um sorry the serif fonts I like using the Playfair. That is the one I use for. The father and the father son thing. Those are the serif fonts. The ones play with the extensions to the this fancy play fair, yeah. Play fair. Play and fair at the center. F A I R. Fair like that. Then I like using either in Ebrima, Ebrima or or Open Science for my other text. That's the names, the themes, and those kind of stuff. Those are the te text I use. Because in typography, when you are working with these two types of fonts that are safe and sensitive. It's best you use the um, serif fonts to be the main captions or the headings, the ones that have larger um, font sizes. Then use the sans serifs for the smaller ones so that it would add some uniformity and feel to it. Because with this one, if I'm to replace this father sand with a, um, a sans serif font, like maybe open sans as I use, and I use this serif font for this text, it will, it will not be nice. That's when you look at, um, for instance, magazines and um, these magazines, for especially the ones for fashion, they like using serif fonts par with complementing with sans serif, um, with sans serif fonts. It really brings them, um, so it brings some, <laughs> brings some serious feel, like some, some class. It adds some class to your designs. That's why I choose these two fonts. But then people like script. This script font, I just wanted something different. I don't want a seminar to, to follow the same trend seminar bulky fonts like that so i wanted to add something stylish to it then i added the script font to it so that's that's basically it please is your question answered or yes sir yes sir perfect thank you okay so i, I was just trying to ask about the um, the gradient map thing and uh, with okay. that would you have to pay attention to the, the the colors in the very image you are having the gradient map over and that, that, you, do, you don't need to have um, a specific thing, like maybe because I want it to blend. It's something that is like covering your image. And looking at what I did here, you don't even see the colors in the in the image. You don't even see the colors there. So it's working with gradient map. It depends on what you are doing and the kind of 
color combination you want to achieve. So it doesn't really have any focus on the image you have. So for instance, this one, if I want to use maybe a dark green and a, a, a light green for it, I'll just choose my colors because it's, it's a gradient map. And it's, it's really overshadowing all the color ground. So if I choose something like this, this is it. But the image at the background had a red. So wherever there's a, a darker shade, it is taking the darker um, color of my gradient map. So when I take this off, see there's a red here. And the red here is not bright as compared to the white side of the gradient map as you place the red. So if you think this is what you want to use for your gradient map for your design, fair enough, you can choose any color that you want to use for your. It doesn't really have any relation with the picture you have behind or whatever. It depends on you, the color that you want to choose and the kind of information and the kind of design idea you want to send out to your your client or whatever. Oh, okay, that's fine. Is there any other question? Hello? Yeah. Hello? In, in depth, so uh, we'll just move on to the Kendrick. next. Okay. Sure. Hey, fool. Hello, uh, Dale. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, boss. Oh, amen. 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 So, um, so if there are no other questions, um, I think we can... Um, Okay, I think um, Marvelous Marius wanted to ask Lodell, would you recommend buying a font? I don't, I don't know, but I'll just leave it, I'll leave it um, to you um, to look into answer. Okay. Buying, buying a font depends on what you are doing. For instance, if you're working um, on um, type logos, like logos that are mostly used, using fonts for, it's better you buy the font so that you can have the rights to it. Because working for uh, on projects like that, projects that are commercial, if you often use free free fonts like that you might end up having a problem because maybe the font that you are using the free font you are using is a comment it's not for commercial basis it's for just personal use but you are using for big companies like that so if you are working on project that demands you using the um the commercial pitches right there's 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 no harm in buying them you can just buy them that's if you have the money i mean i don't have money so i don't buy fonts we all go to hundred a thousand and one font.com it's free. That's where you get the font. Uh, Please, is there a question answered? Uh, and okay, I think the, the other one too has been already answered. Okay. Loda, what, what version of Photoshop are you using? I think um 2017. Okay. Um Okay, I think that 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 should be all. Um, I'm I'm very very happy to have you join us today. It's been an amazing session. Charlie, um, people really enjoyed it, and from the feedbacks, they really enjoyed it. They really enjoyed it. So I think I think you can you can turn off your screen sharing now. Somebody no was problem. asking, how did you um, duplicate, get the art, um, art board? How did you du duplicate the art board? Oh, okay. You let, me, let me see if I can share my screen and show the person. Okay. okay, so, um, okay. Please, uh, is the screen... Uh, please, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, is my screen being shared? Okay, yeah, so yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's... It's, there, um, there are a lot of ways to, um, you can do it. If you are, you are somebody who likes using um, Illustrator, you will see this effect. That's the artboard effect. Photoshop, we have artboard here, but then with the Photoshop one, it is not really smooth as compared to the one with um, Illustrator. So I normally don't create my artboards from here. I don't create them from here. I just create what I want to create, maybe four by four inches, 300 pixels. 
like that. Then what I'll do is I'll just let me zoom out. Let's so, and I'll go to the side. Um, I right click on the normal move um, the selection uh, the move tool. Okay, the move tool. Right click on it. You see add ball tool there. When you click on it, it will turn into this arrow like that. This arrow like that. Mm -hmm. So sure, what I sure. do is I just select, click on the first point of the thing, select everything here like that. Because I want to duplicate exactly the same thing. And I'll just click on this plus. That's one way. And another way that you can do it is okay. since you are in your art board, art board, you can just control, like you're duplicating, normal way to uh, duplicate, control, uh, sorry, alt click. If you turn to this double arrow, you just click hold and you drag it to any part of it the workspace that you have like that so so when you look at the layer side you mm -hmm. see it has art board one art board two you can rename them just like the illustrator one the same way so like that so you can move it anywhere like that you can you can also change the size if you want to maybe i can make this one two i can come to the side and i'll just change it to i'll get it maybe five so you get like the illustrator the way illustrator works the same thing you can click on this duplicate it put it somewhere 